You're at the high level for the more significant bits. All right. Well, that is, as I say, largely the, the VT100 side of, of the um, house. But remember that we've got that second uh, serial connection for port B on the RC2014. So let's have a look at what that's connected to. So we'll get back into CPM. Now, oh, and I'm in local mode again. I know a lot of people um, struggled with this and it took me ages and ages myself, but eventually I managed to get a copy of both um, Kermit, uh, standard Kermit uh, 411 for CPM2, and a copy of Qterm onto this machine. And they're gonna let us demonstrate the other key feature of this. So let's fire up Qterm. Qterm by default, uh, this is the one that Anna Christina Nass provides on her website. Uh, she's a re re regular contributor to the forum, so you can go search for that uh, through the RC2014 forum. And um, so what we are connected to here on the second UART, straight back into uh, on from serial port B into the second UART on the VT132 board, what we are connected to is an AT modem. So if we um, do an inquiry on slot zero, this is the high nibble AT modem. So uh, this is the same code base that features in the MSA 8080 with its onboard virtual uh, Wi-Fi modem. And uh, what this modem is gonna let us do, let's first of all have a look at the available commands. Uh, so this modem lets us effectively establish, uh, uh, do dialing but over Wi-Fi. Um, using telnet protocols and connect to for other hosts uh, on the internet or locally um, so effectively like many uh, wi-fi modem uh, kits that are out there this provides some of the same functions uh, so the first thing we need to do is join a wi-fi network um, i've used the plus w extended command set for that we're going to join my home network you're welcome to try and join it if you're ever in town. Um, so I don't mind, whoop, let's mistype that. Let's just back up a bit. So I don't mind uh, sharing your credentials. It is it is uh, locked down. You've got to be uh, whitelisted to be able to access it. So I really don't mind you seeing um, the login details here, nothing too sophisticated. And we can, um, do a couple of different queries to see if we're connected. So a, a status query on the Wi-Fi, a six is, mm, I think a six is disconnected. Let me check. Uh, the way, best way to know is to see if we got an IP address. We didn't, so we're not connected. I must have mistyped something. Let's try again. Now we've got an IP address, so we've attached to the uh, Wi-Fi access point in my house. Um, so that effectively gives us dial tone. If we tried doing any um, AT commands that expected the dial tone before we joined, we'd get a no dial tone um, result. So for example, if we um, just temporarily disconnect from, if we, uh, unjoin the Wi-Fi and try doing a dial. We'll get a no dial tone fault. Uh, if we rejoin or reconnect to the Wi-Fi, oh, let's get the command right. Rejoin the Wi-Fi and now when we dial, uh, we get an error because there's nothing to connect to. No answer from AAA, but at least we do have dial tone because we're connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, so something that people often uh, like to have a connect to and have a look at when they first get a hold of one of these Wi-Fi modems is a site called telehack.com. Um, you can see we got a few spurious characters there at the beginning. They're the Telnet handshake, and because we haven't enabled Telnet mode yet, um, we saw those characters and we didn't actually execute a proper ha telnet handshake. But here we are 
reaching out across the internet um, and we can um, look at the phase of the moon and all the things that Telehack gives us. Of course, when we want to leave, leave a site, it's the plus, plus, plus to break back out into AT command mode and a hang up. And that gets us out of, um, that, that t takes down that connection. Uh, the other thing that I think is great to connect to is a local Kermit server for file transfers. I'm going to do that from inside Kermit rather than from here inside uh, Qterm. So let's get out of Qterm and let's fire up Kermit. Okay, so we'll need to get back into the modem. Oop. And re-establish our Wi-Fi connection. Yep, we've got an IP address, so we're all good to go. And I'm going to dial into my local um, desktop machine, which happens to be a Hackintosh running High Sierra still. And I have got a Kermit server sitting there waiting and listening on port 8023. And as you can see, that Kermit server is ready to serve. So we can uh, drop back out into command mode. And now we can do all of the remote Kermit commands. And you can see this is where I downloaded the Twilight VT file from. So let's get uh, the Sun VT file. There you go. That's a pretty short, small file. Uh, let's get a bigger one. Let's get the um, let's get the globe. So Kermit 80 running on your um, RC2014 and connecting over Wi-Fi using a, you know, what looks to the RC2014 like a modem um, is a really convenient way of connecting to a C Kermit server on another machine to download and upload files. Um, let's quit out of Kermit. So for the final stage of the demonstration, I've uh, restarted the RC2014 at a lower clock speed and, and only running at 19200 board on port A. And we'll have a look at those files we've downloaded along with rerunning uh, the Twilight uh, VT100 art at that sort of, at that speed. So let's, uh, whoop. It's also worth, um, I think turning X on, X off. And then we'll go and type. Who knows, maybe that one would benefit from running faster. Oh, here comes Australia. And the sun. Oh, 
very happy and finally the twilight again So I'm sure there's many features that you might have seen a clue to uh, on some of the screens that have flashed by. I know I certainly haven't gone into everything. We haven't uh, demonstrated logging into a bulletin board that would benefit from uh, and show stuff in color, would benefit from the VGA character set and 25 line mode. Uh, so they're things I'll happily put in another video. But if you've got features that you'd either like me to demonstrate because you saw a clue to them or things that you'd, you'd be looking for from a VT100 emulator, um, by all means, add a, add a comment below the video and I'll read those and uh, make up a list of things to cover in the next video. Great. Well, if you've uh, liked what you've seen so far and you want to see the next instalment with more details on the VT132, uh, please think to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I'd also recommend checking out some of the videos I've made previously on my MC8080 um, simulation um, replica and um, look forward to seeing you again in future. Bye now.